I was just listening to the words of a handsome man with blonde hair and blue eyes giving a speech on the stage. Suddenly, Susan? Startled by the sound of my name from behind, I turned around to see a familiar face. It is you, Susan. Long time no see. Mr. David? It had been years since we last met, and I felt awkward calling him by his first name, so I intentionally added Mr. I wondered, did that seem strange? But he didn't seem concerned at all. To meet here, of all places, how many years has it been since we last talked? David continued in a friendly manner, as if he was talking to an old friend he hadn't seen in a long time. Unsure of how to react, I was just bewildered. Noticing this, he said, Sorry, it's nostalgic seeing you. But what a coincidence, Susan. I thought you'd take over that dirty factory. You're in the mass media? That's unexpected. Then he smirked maliciously. Is that factory still around? Or did you switch to mass media because it went under? If so, I must say, good choice. The organizer of this party is quite the author, I've heard. Recognized as the real deal by many. Unlike your family's grimy factory. I was momentarily stunned by his blunt rudeness. But then I remembered. This was the kind of person he always was. Nothing has changed. If he's still the same, then parting ways was indeed the right decision. A thought that crossed my mind. David, who is this? Just then, a high-pitched voice, a woman with her hair up and flashy makeup approached intertwining her arm with David's. Is she the ex-girlfriend you were talking about? Exactly. You got it. I was just joking. Feeling slightly uncomfortable with their exchange, I said, Well then, and turned away. Still, their voices followed me. She's quite plain, isn't she? Was that your type, David? Or were you really just after her wealth? Of course. I wouldn't date such a dull, plain girl without money. Turns out she was poor after all. She probably needed to attend this party, but couldn't afford a dress. So she came in that drab outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter followed his words. I thought to myself, say whatever you like. It's you who will be surprised later. But really, he hasn't changed at all. Years ago, when he and I were dating... He was always a liar, rude, insincere, and a terribly mistaken man. When I started dating David, I was a college student. Back then, my life was consumed by studies and part-time work, both for learning and for preparing to take over my family's business. I didn't have time to enjoy college life as a leisure playground. David, a fellow student from a different department, was the one who approached me casually just like he did with others. Thanks to him, I was able to blend in with my surroundings and naturally begin to be drawn to him, which led us to dating. David seemed genuinely interested in my stories, which others found boring. I was so happy that I often talked about business administration and my family's factory. Business administration is really practical, you know. It's one thing to have some knowledge, but understanding it through organization and real-world observation is different. Like, after attending a lecture on management, I visited my family's factory and... David never showed any dislike for these stories. Niche topics. I was very happy about that. It felt like he was acknowledging my dad, whom I admired as a great man. My dad, who started a business from nothing and grew it significantly was the greatest person I knew. So taking over his business was my dream since I was little. When David said, I'd like to see your family's factory, I was even moved, thinking he had taken an interest in my family's business from our conversations. But when I took him to the factory, David's attitude changed completely. What is this? You talked it up so much I thought it was some impressive factory, but it's just dirty. 
I looked up at the factory, surprised. To me, its appearance was familiar. But now that he mentioned it, the walls were indeed stained and faded, giving it the look of an old factory. But running a business requires money to be spent in various areas. It seemed my dad thought it better to invest the crucial funds in developing products, marketing, and the welfare of the workers rather than in beautifying the exterior of the factory. I strongly agreed with this and had never thought of the factory's appearance as dirty. But it's what's inside that matters. The important thing is that this factory develops its own fabrics right from the thread. Bragging about your family again? So noisy. It's obvious just looking at it. Clinging to a dirty factory, just a poor person with nowhere else to turn. He sighed loudly and theatrically. Thought I could marry into wealth, but was deceived. What a waste of time. As I stood in shock, he turned his back and walked away. After we broke up, I found it hard to go to university. Above all, I felt humiliated that what my respected dad had built was insulted. My dad, noticing my distress, listened to me. When I hesitantly revealed what he had said, my dad laughed it off. Don't worry about such things, Susan. I've heard all sorts, too. But as you said, the quality of what we produce is far more important than the appearance of the factory. Besides, someone who mocks after seeing the factory is less important than the customers who come to the store, leave satisfied with our products, and smile. Then my dad made a suggestion. Susan, how about studying abroad for a while? Eh? If you're serious about learning management, I've always thought it would be good to study abroad. I'm planning to establish factories overseas, too. It'll broaden your horizons and help you better understand what it means to run a company. But, as I hesitated with my response, my dad gently placed his hand on my shoulder. It must be hard going to college. Maybe diving into a different environment is a good opportunity. We have to think positively about everything. Encouraged by my dad, I decided to study abroad. Around that time, I overheard David, who apparently caught wind of this, telling his friends, I thought Susan's family had a good company, but it's just a dirty factory. Her talking about inheriting it and studying abroad is pointless. She's just showing off. What is he talking about? My dad's company is truly impressive, but I had no time to bother with a superficial man who spoke carelessly without knowing anything. Reminding myself of this, I went abroad to study. During my study abroad, I encountered completely different values, and it was a truly enriching experience. My dad, who started and grew his own business, must have had the foresight to know his experience would strengthen me as his successor. But even he probably didn't anticipate how much this particular encounter would change me. She expanded the already large business even further. The speech on the stage continued. A man I knew had published a book on management was hosting a book launch party. The presence of many mass media professionals indicated its high profile. He had modeled a young female entrepreneur in his management book, and its success was widely acknowledged. Probably David, being in the media, had heard the rumors and came. That's why he mistook me for a fellow media professional. Now, let me introduce a partner who has supported me both personally and professionally. Daniel, the man on the stage, smiled towards me. I responded with a smile and walked onto the stage. That's when I caught sight of David's face, contorted in a sneer, but he quickly crossed his arms. So the poor girl from a dirty factory married a rich guy. After all that bragging about her family, it's really pathetic. The atmosphere in the venue instantly froze. The only person laughing was the woman next to him. What are you saying? 
A middle-aged man next to him, presumably his boss, raised his voice. Yes, I was the model for this book, having taken over my family business. And the author was a young instructor I met during my study abroad. He taught me various qualities necessary for management. The most important was the ability to judge people. So he advised me never to be deceived by a strange man again. Since then, I've endeavored to observe people closely and discern their true nature. The man next to David, who seemed to be his boss, bowed deeply towards me. I deeply apologize for my subordinate's extreme rudeness. It's okay. I know him, so I understand what kind of person he is. It's not your fault. Please, raise your head. The man looked up as I instructed, but his eyes remained downcast. Meanwhile, David's eyes were wide with surprise, but he didn't utter a single word of apology. The woman with him just gaped at us, speechless. I sighed and continued. Really, I had no eye for people back then. That guy over there was my college boyfriend. It seems he was only after a marriage for wealth. He got mad about the shabby appearance of my family's factory and broke up with me unilaterally. The venue became noisy. Wait a minute. Even back then, that factory was known for its cutting-edge technology in manufacturing uniquely developed fabrics. Yes, exactly. He just couldn't see that. He judged by appearances and missed the essence. If he had seen it, maybe he would have been the one marrying into wealth now. I smiled slightly and then turned my gaze to the screen set up on the stage. But I've recently realized that I can't entirely deny his words. While it's wrong to judge by appearance... The fact that there are people who do, like him, is also true. That's why, after I became president and the company's performance improved, I used half of the profits to renovate the factory. I was planning to introduce it on this screen. At my cue, a photo appeared on the screen. A factory with blackened walls. This was our factory when I was in college. Certainly, it wasn't pretty. But it changed to this. A different photo was projected on the screen. Shining white walls. The L-shaped windows were decorated with small items and plants, visible from outside, like a cafe. Quite a difference, right? Indeed. Content is more important than appearance. But a beautiful-looking factory improves the image of the factory and the company. Especially since some people have negative impressions about factories nearby thinking of them as eyesores, noisy, or polluting. But what if the factory looks this vibrant and stylish? The impression is completely different. I turned my gaze to the audience and continued. The renovation was a huge success. With the factory looking nice, the number of college students wanting to work here surged. And the reactions of our business partners during factory visits improved significantly. Focusing only on appearance is not good. But if there's room, paying attention to it can be one approach. If he hadn't mentioned it back then, I might not have realized this. It's important to think positively and turn everything into a plus. This is something my dad often said. Then it dawned on me. I'm sorry. I should be talking about the book, not these things. It's okay. Despite being the star of the day, Daniel still smiled kindly. After all, this book is about you. And what you said just now was enough. I think everyone here understands that you are a remarkable person and a great business leader. So they surely realize that the book about you is something special too. Spontaneous applause broke out. The only one not clapping was David. His girlfriend initially joined in, but stopped when he glared at her. Conversely, David's boss was giving him a stern look, showing his displeasure at David's lack of respect towards me and Daniel. David pretended not to notice. 
After the meeting ended and people started leaving, a loud rebuke echoed. What were you thinking? Not apologizing after making such disrespectful comments? You've tarnished my and the company's reputation. Do you understand that? It was David's boss. He must have waited to scold David so as not to disrupt the party. I won't forgive this. Be prepared. Wait, I was deceived. She was talking to me before she went on stage and didn't say anything. Desperate, David tried to excuse himself, but Daniel approached him. Are you talking about this conversation? He pressed a button on a small square device he held. It was a voice recorder. Is that factory still around or did it fail and that's why you're in mass media? Such a plain, boring woman. I wouldn't date her without money. Turns out she was poor after all. David's face turned pale. What is this? Did you set me up? No, not at all. We had no idea you'd be here. We always carry a voice recorder due to our positions, just in case. She does. David was at a loss for words. A crowd had formed around us. Everyone looked at David as if they were looking at something filthy. Apologize, his boss said sternly. The people around joined in demanding, Apologize! Apologize! David, looking down, said in a small voice, I'm sorry, he said. We can't hear you. A low voice came from somewhere. David spoke louder. I'm sorry. You should apologize more sincerely. Again, a comment from somewhere in the crowd. I don't need him to go that far. As I said this, David glared at me resentfully and bowed deeply. I am truly sorry. Only after raising his voice did the tense atmosphere around us finally dissipate. A sense of willingness to forgive him seemed to spread. And with that, the party truly came to an end. I heard later that David resigned from the newspaper company he worked for. The incident at the party not only caused him great embarrassment, but as his boss had said, it also significantly damaged the reputation of his employer. Consequently, the company's trust in him eroded. He was removed from many projects and even faced a demotion in the following year's personnel changes. Proud as he was, David submitted his resignation. He immediately started looking for a job in other mass media companies, but none of them would consider him. The reason, of course, was the incident at the party. His disgrace in front of many media professionals had become a well-known story in the industry and no one was willing to hire him. After losing his job, his girlfriend left him too. He fell behind on payments for the expensive apartment he rented to maintain appearances and found himself in trouble without any support. As for me, my company continued to do well and everything was going smoothly. I married Daniel, my partner, and we've built a happy home together.